reason I think it's important to find areas of your life to create breakthroughs rather than just saying, okay, you know, I'm stuck here. I just have to accept it is it's not only just for you and the adventure and the learning you create, but it's showing other people. We really are beings that have this unlimited potential. We came from this creator that is unlimited and, and we are unlimited, but we choose to come into our body in, into form of a body just to have some fun, right? That you don't have when you're non-physical. But at the same time, what I like to call it is, you know, one, and this is not an original term, but one foot in the physical, one foot in the non-physical. The non-physical is where we can really shift reality. The physical, when we bind to that, things are fixed. You know, this is solid. That's not, I can change this. I can't change that. So it's kind of fun to just play in both worlds. And that's, to me, that's the, the fun of life. Welcome to Letting Go and the Greatest Secret, where we explore the end of your suffering and the beginning of lasting happiness. I'm Hale Dwoskin, and today our guest is Tom McCarthy. Tom McCarthy is a father of two, husband of 30 years, CEO or board member of eight companies, early stage investor in over 40 companies, and a worldwide philanthropist. After a successful career in a Wall Street firm, Tom found his true passion in the field of helping people in business, athletics, and life break through their limitations and step into their full potential. What is the work that you do? How would you describe the work that you do? Kind of hard to describe because I do a lot of different things. I'm an entrepreneur. I've had different companies like restaurants, insurance companies, software companies. But the main work that I do, Hale, is around helping people, similar to what you do, helping people really step into who they could be and who they really want to be, but they feel stuck. And so that's the work I've been doing for a long time. And I started that coming out of the financial world. I was with a Wall Street firm and I was doing well. I was the youngest they'd ever hired out of university, out of college, but I didn't love it. And I saw this guy, Tony Robbins on TV one day and he'd just written a book called Unlimited Power. And I read that book. And so I moved out to California to help run his company when I was in my twenties. And I just loved it when I saw people light up. So. I got addicted to that. I, I worked with him for about three years, still a good friend, but I moved on and I started my own company to do that, primarily with corporate America. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I just, just like you do, I'm sure I, you just love watching people light up the way you're lighting up right now. I even love that smile you've got on your face. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, it is, it is fun. It really is fun to help people on a any level we can, but the, when, people either recognize they're holding themselves back or they recognize what's even beyond that. There is this definitely a sense of something lighting up and then, and something falling away. So it's, yeah, it's, yeah. and it's, it's really fun to be a part of that. Yes. So uh, tell me uh, a little bit about, you have a new book out. Uh, tell me a little bit about the book and yeah. what's in it. Well, the book is called The Breakthrough Code. It's a parable. I, I've written a couple other books, but this was the first parable I've written. So it's not a true story, but there's parts of me in it. And, but, but also just things I've experienced and, and parts of my work. Uh, the, the Breakthrough Code really is, and it's not, it's not uh, you know, no one's ever discovered this before. So some of the things you would recognize in it, but you would you know that you you wouldn't believe and you you probably would believe because you see all these people that are still stuck even though the information's out there so i wanted to bring out the information of what i call the breakthrough code there's three big ideas in it okay that allow people to get unstuck and live what i call a life without limits it doesn't mean every area of your life is always working perfectly but where there is a limit there's a way to with with some focused effort and using these techniques, there's a way to break through. And it's, it's an important book to me because I really did put my heart and soul into it. 
I was a person that was stuck a lot, particularly earlier in my life. I was three years old. I still remember looking out the window of our home. I had a two-year-old brother. I had a little six-month-old brother. My mom was probably 28 years old and a taxi cab pulled up. My dad was in the army. He was an army officer who had been sent to Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Taxi cab pulled up to tell my mom that my dad had been killed in Vietnam the day before, about a month before he was supposed to come home. So I grew up with lots of fear, lots of anxiety, lots of sadness, grief, mm -hmm. sure. all those emotions. And I just thought that's the way it was. And over time, I figured out, hey, you can let go of that old baggage. Your work is wonderful. I love your work. You can let go of those, the, those old thoughts, energies, emotions, and really be free. And so that was uh, that's part of my journey. And I wanted to share it with people. And I actually went through your work many years ago, and it was super, super helpful. I love it. Oh, cool. I, d I didn't know you'd done that. That's wonderful. Yeah. So, uh, so what you said, you mentioned three principles or three kernels yeah. of wisdom that are in your book. What, yeah. what are they? I call them big ideas. Yeah, so, let's, hear, let's, let's hear the big ideas. There we go. Let's go. <laughs> there's some habits associated with them. But the first big idea, if you're going to make a breakthrough, it's, I, I call it focus on less and then obsess. So you can't, like I can't focus on uh, being healthier and being wealthier and being a better husband to my wife and being a dad, like, you know, there's a, there's a certain amount of energy we have every single day. And when we just kind of spread it out over 50 things, it gets diluted. When you're stuck, you need focused energy. You don't need a light bulb, you need a laser. So mm -hmm. the first thing that I ask people to do is like figure out where where is it that you want to apply focused energy to create a breakthrough? And mm -hmm. what does that look like? And so they get clear on that. And then the second part of that, so it's focus on less and then obsess. I'm not saying obsess in a conscious way, but you know, we've got a conscious mind, we've got a, a subconscious, I call it the super conscious. Mm -hmm. That's where you want to create the, the obsession. You program down into the super conscious what you want and you do that, and again, this is all stuff you're familiar with, but I, I like people to do it when they first wake up in the morning, right before they go to bed when they're in an alpha state. But the superconscious can process 40 million bits of information per second. Get that working for you. So that's number one, focus in and then create a, a superconscious movement or obsession where it starts finding you those ideas. It, it sees Hale's book in a bookstore and goes, oh my gosh, that's that's a book I need to read, right? Your superconscious can do all that. And I don't even believe that the mind is actually in the body. I think we live within our minds and our superconscious mind is out there connecting with you, connecting with whatever we need sure. once it knows what we want. Sure. So, so uh, but talk a little bit about more uh, it, what you mean about programming. Are you talking about an affirmation or are you talking about just a focused intent? What does that mean to you exactly? Well, one of the habits, there's two habits that I have under this particular big idea. Sure, yeah, let's go for the habits. Yeah, so one, one of them is to connect what you want to your purpose. So people say, I want, I want to achieve this, I want to achieve that, and then they go out there and they do it for a little while and they work on it, and then it gets a little hard and they give up. Mm -hmm. Well, we're all here with a unique purpose, something we're born to do, the reason we came onto this planet in the bodies that we're in. Mm -hmm. Mark Twain said the two most important days of your life are the day you're born and the day you find out why. When you can attach a result in your life to the reason you're on this planet, now it's got extra power. And so that's that helps to strengthen the program. And then the other habit I have is I say, see it, feel it, believe it, and then let it go. So, but really see it, see it done, feel it done, believe that it's done. Believe just means a feeling of certainty about it being done mm -hmm. because that's what truly programs, not just an affirmation. If I go, if I say an affirmation, like I'm really happy, like that had, I didn't see that. I didn't feel that. And I don't even believe that. I mean, I am happy, but, but there was nothing programming there. And that's where people, you know, from the old affirmations that go, I tried affirmations. It didn't work. Mm -hmm. Well, you were saying it like it wasn't true, so of course your mind is going to reject it. Mm -hmm. So there's a way of there's a way of programming that it requires you to literally carve into your mind 
the reality already being there. Everything's created twice, first inside, then outside. When we create it inside, it starts forming on the outside, but to form something that's, you know, like our bodies, like to heal your body, this is dense energy. It's gonna take carving in the mind. So, so that's, that's an example of uh, the way we teach. It's not just an affirmation. It really is seeing it, feeling it, believing it, and then letting it go. Once you see it, feel it, believe it, let it go for, for that day or for you know the next few hours and just let your super conscious work on it. Okay, I see, great. So it's, it's, it's kind of like repro reprogramming yourself. Is that what you're trying to do? Well, the, the second big idea is upgrade your story, upgrade your life. So the first big idea is just focus in on what you want, see it, feel it, believe it. But then the second idea, and this relates a lot to your work is, okay, I've got this result that I want to create, yes. but I'm dragging around my story of who I am and what I'm capable of and what I'm able to do that wasn't able to create this new result. It, it created where I am right now. And so we upgrade our phones, we upgrade our software, but most people don't think about upgrading their story because they think this is true what I believe. Right. And right. Well, that's true for you because you believe it. But the, the, one of the things... Um, that I point to just to, even in the recent time is the Ukrainian war. Yeah. So if you look at, because what, what I'm really talking about with the breakthrough code is how do you shift reality? Mm -hmm. Every day we wake up and based upon the way we are programmed and the way we typically act in a day, which we're just acting based on our habits or our programming, the, there's certain possibilities. Uh, there's probably, let's say a million possibilities, but the most likely one is that you're going to do the exact same thing you did yesterday. And so the, 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 the probabilities are that, you know, these possibilities are going to be the ones that come true. Mm -hmm. but if you look at the Ukrainian war and you look at what President Zelensky did, the, the most probable outcome of that war was that Russia comes in in two or three days. They take over Ukraine. Ukraine surrenders. They negotiate, you know, some sort of uh, surrender that gives them a little bit, but not much. That didn't happen, Hale. Mm -hmm. Zelensky said... We're going to win this war. We need help, though, but we're going to win. He had a story inside of him that I don't even know he had his whole life, but he stepped up. He developed a new story. He let go of whatever was stopping him, maybe using the Sedona method or whatever <laughs> method. Yeah, but he, he let go of that, and we responded. Like, there's no way all of us would have cared as much had he not shifted reality by the way that he stepped up and, and created this story that we all embrace. And now we're all cheering for them. Energetically, every day, I'm, I'm seeing the Russians go back into Russia, right? And, and I don't think I would have done that. Like, I don't do that for every conflict that's out there. But this guy shifted reality by having a big outcome that he's completely focused on and then changing his story and changing your story and my story and most of the world's story. Yes, yes. Yeah, most of us live in a story of our own uh, making, not realizing that the story itself is just a limitation. Exactly. And we live not only a story in a story of our own making, but a lot of us have just adapted, adopted someone else's story. Like my oh, well, totally. I, was, I was three years old when my dad died. My mom was filled with grief and sadness and fear. Guess what I got filled with? I, I was in an alpha state at three years old. I adopted her beliefs back then. I, I, I took on her emotions mm -hmm. and I was stuck in that for, you know, a few years. And gradually I learned that, hey, wait a minute. I don't have to keep this part of my story. This is my mom's story. Mm -hmm. I don't need to keep this part of my story. And, and when you free yourself up, but the, the interesting thing is, this is why I love your work so much. A lot of people think, okay, I'm just going to create a new story. You know, I'm, I'm successful, I'm strong, I'm smart and all that. But if you're layering that on top of a faulty foundation of old limiting beliefs, remembering experiences where you failed over and over again with intense energy, it's, it's on a weak foundation. It can't take. This is why I love your work. You're clearing out, you're clearing out. So now there's room. There's room and it's fertile ground for this new story to develop. And yeah. that's part of what, what we teach in the Breakthrough Code too. That's great, that's great. Yeah, so most, most of us have built a life on sand. Yeah. <laughs> or sometimes on clouds. 
yeah. <laughs> it's just yeah. not a very solid foundation. Or, or we're trying. We're we've been doing a perpetual remodel instead of just getting a new house. <laughs> Tear down the house and rebuild. <laughs> right. Yeah, not a remodel. That's a good analogy. I like that. That's true. I'm going to use that. I'm going to use that one. Go, like go that. for it. It's fine with me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. And and you. So there are three. What's the third one? The, the third one's about action. <clears throat> I do. I do believe in action. I do believe, though, that our actions are driven by our story. Right. You know, if I believe I can like Zelensky at some level believed that they could win the war and that drove his actions. If he truly didn't believe that, I don't think he would have acted in the way that he did. Yes. But here's the thing. Uh, it's not just like some people say, take massive action. Once you know what you want, you guys take. I don't believe in massive action. I think that's you know, you're, you're going to bump, you're going to run over people, you're going to break windows, not literally, but that's what massive action does, because it's not, it doesn't discriminate. It's just act. So you're acting. What our third big idea is, pack your day with effective action. Now, what's effective action? There's, there's two types of actions. There's action that I call achievement action. It's writing an email, it's getting on a podcast, it's, it's, um, you know, going to a meeting, giving a speech, whatever, writing a proposal. Yes. That's what you're trying to achieve. But then there's yeah, also yeah. recovery action or nourishment action. And that's using this, the Sedona method. It's meditating. It's getting enough sleep. So you've got to pack your day with both types of action because it's not just like go, 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 go. Like, you know, earlier today, actually, I did a bunch of stuff this morning. I, I sat and meditated and did kind of... Um, uh, heart mouth breathing uh -huh. in a hyperbaric chamber for an hour and 15 minutes this morning. Well, That's great. Yeah. But people are like, well, how did that help you? Cause I came out of it better with less inflammation, right? With, with uh, just more energy. So that type of action is important too. And so we, we show people it's not just go, go, go. That was the old way of doing it. That didn't really work. It burned people out. Yes. You need to replenish too. Great. Great. Yeah, that's that's true. If you're not taking care of the body mind, it does break down. It does. And that action. Do you also, uh, as part of your work, focus on that there's more than just the goal. There's there's living life. I guess that's the second part, second type Absolutely. of action. Yeah. And I don't even I don't even talk about goals. I call them results. Uh, the reason that we have them, though, is is to create a, a little bit of a path where we do get to live life. It's not about necessarily achieving that. That's going to be so great. Most people, when they achieve something, it's great for a little while. And they're like, man, I thought this was going to be life changing. And it just it was kind of cool. It's just but, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That... yeah. And so and, and the other thing, too, the, the reason I think it's important to find areas of your life to create breakthroughs rather than just saying, OK, I just have to, you know, I'm stuck here. I just have to accept it is it's not only just for you and the adventure and the learning you create, but it's showing other people. We really are beings that have this unlimited potential. We came from this creator that is unlimited and, and we are unlimited, but we choose to come into our body in, into form of a body just to have some fun, right? That you don't <laughs> have when you're non-physical, uh -huh. but at the same time, we can, what I like to call it is, you know, one, and this is not an original term, but one foot in the physical, one foot in the non-physical. Uh -huh. The non-physical is where we can really shift reality. The physical, when we buy into that, things are fixed. You know, this is solid. That's not, I can change this. I can't change that. So it's kind of fun to just play in both worlds. And that's, to me, that's the, the fun of life. Yes. Well, li life, is, <laughs> life is meant to be with fully and enjoyed as yes. opposed to just work from one uh, intent to the next. So yeah. it sounds it sounds like you're you're sharing that with people. So um, is there any other big learnings that you'd like to share with people? I just the thing that I really love to share is that we can shift reality. Most people are just accepting. You know, one of the quotes that I use is or that I came up with is uh, average conforms to reality the average person is going to look out at the world and go okay how do i fit in you know how do i just kind of keep going and it's almost like you know you i, I use this picture sometimes in in my uh, presentations where you know you've got this traffic this traffic jam it's moving super slow but everyone's just kind of moving along but then there's the fast lane 
and that's open. And in real life, like we like to go in the fast lane, but uh, in, in cars, but we don't like to go in it when we don't fit in. And one of the things that I felt super uncomfortable with early on in my life was I figured out I'm different. Like, you know, I was a pretty good student. I was a good athlete, but inside my thoughts were different. Like when you're a parent, when you lose a parent at age three, life is not black and white anymore. It's, it's gray. And I was searching and I felt super different, you know, a little weird compared to other people. And I was always just trying to fit in, fit in, fit in. It took me a long time before I could say, hey, wait a minute, I'm different. Like I, I, I need to be out in this other lane here, even though there's not a lot of people there. I need to be out there because that's where I'm really living life. Yeah, you know, I, what I've noticed is that the people who come to either self-help work or self-improvement work or uh, any kind of spiritual pursuit, uh, they do feel different. They, they, don't just, uh, they don't just simply go along with the way the world appears to be. They're yeah. probing to see what's actually real or true. And that that leads people down many different explorations, and each each exploration for most people is unique, and it's important to honor your own explore, exploration, and, and and honor that the no two body minds are the same. They are each each one is a unique expression, and at the same that. and at the same time, the inside there is something that is already unified is already whole it's already enough yeah, i love that what and, what got you on your what got you on this path i'm just curious you're in my story a little bit what got you on this path well i was attracted to this because uh from a very young age i was very interested in spirituality mm -hmm. and um i guess the defining moment what was the defining moment well there there was numerous ones but i from a very young age I, I realize that, that the way the world is perceived mm -hmm. is not exactly what's real. There's something, <laughs> exactly. there's something more yeah. and, and something simpler and something more direct and more, um, I don't know, more natural. And so yeah. I, I became an explorer. I started exploring yeah. that. And I was also very fortunate that at age 22, I, I met Lester Levinson, uh, yeah. who was my mentor. Yes. And, and he uh, told me about a process that I'd never heard of, but he always said, as you sit around the table and release, I had no idea what he was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but it, in my connecting with him, I, he's talked about a course. I did it the ne very next weekend, and it was a two-weekend course. Before the course was over, I, I had this deep intuitive knowing that I was going to dedicate the rest of my life wow. to sharing that particular teaching. And it's awesome. And uh, he turned over his copyrights to me in the early 90s before he died. And the work has continued to evolve uh, uh, from just letting go to, uh, uh, to just letting go in one way to many ways of letting go and and it's also evolved in a more non-dual way to helping people just see through all sense of apparent limitations so yeah that's beautiful it, you, you may have you may have been my instructor i took the course probably in the either late 80s or early 90s yes and it was in del mar california i think that oh night. del mar yeah. Oh, yes, I probably was your instructor. If you took it in <laughs> Del Mar, <laughs> long time ago. Long yes, time yes. Ago. We're both the, dating oh, ourselves, right? That's now. right. Well, yes, we're old. <laughs> oh well. But I, I do remember. Uh, um, I at the time in that, that time period, the, the only one who was instructing the Sedona method in Del Mar was me. Wow. Okay. Cool. They, we had different instructors that kind of specialize yeah. in different areas. So you probably were in one of my classes. Yeah. yeah that's <laughs> awesome. Good to see you again, teacher. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> so, uh, anything else you want to share with people before we wrap up? Any any core suggestion or challenge or something you'd like to leave people with? Yeah, I, I would just challenge everybody to to look at their life and, and, and just ask themselves, 
where do I want to grow? Where do I want to grow? Uh, you know, we get so addicted to just being who we are. 95% of what we do in a day is, is our, pretty much already dictated by our habits. Mm -hmm. So we think we're free thinkers. Yeah, I go into the day every day. I go into every day, you know, just kind of making things happen. Well, the things you're making happen, you're doing with your old habits. And we're meant to grow. We're meant to evolve. We're meant to learn. We're meant to, you know, learn from people like you how to get rid of old stories, you know, dislodge things that are causing us pain so we can move on to be more free and happier. And, and that's really what the breakthrough code, which I hope people will read it. It's a, it's a, it's a parable. So it's an easy read. It's on Amazon. And I really want people to understand they're not trapped. I felt trapped when I was younger. I felt, you know, alone so much. I felt cheated. I don't have a dad. And, and now I look back and I go, yeah, that happened, but that made me. I, I would have loved to have had my dad. I'm not saying I, I wouldn't have, you know, I would want to have happened what happened, but it made me. It made me more empathetic. It made me more of a leader. I wouldn't be here sitting talking with you had that not happened when I was that age. I'm sure I would have, you know, be doing something completely different because I, I had a lot of empathy from that because I was in so much pain. Mm -hmm. That's why it, I lit up when I figured out, wow. I can help people get out of pain, right? And, and go and do things they never thought they could do. Mm -hmm. And I've made that my life's work. So not that everybody has to do something like that, but just understand you've got possibilities. I don't care how dire it looks. I don't care how much uh, you're suffering right now. You've got possibilities to grow and learn and help so many other people as you do. So that's what I would challenge people to do. And don't just do it for yourself. Like, the things I do, the the outcomes that I have now in my life, yeah, I, I'll benefit from them. But the reality is mo many of them I'm doing just to prove that, hey, if I can do it, I know anyone else can do it. Yeah. So do it for the planet. Do it for Zelensky is not just helping the Ukraine. He's helping all of us understand how we can step up and support each other and and feel a connection to each other. Great. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure talking to you. Uh, and we, we will uh, put up all your information in the show notes so that people can find you easily. Uh, and But just so we know, can you just say, for people who don't read notes, so the name of the book is? Yeah, and I've got it in front of me. I kind of modeled it a little bit after The Alchemist because this is about shifting reality. Yes, yes. It's called The Breakthrough Code. The Break. Breakthrough Code. And I'm Tom McCarthy. Okay, yeah. great. And yeah. and your website, even though we're going to put it in the notes? Well, there's uh, there's two they can go to. One is thebreakthroughcode.com, and the other one is just tommccarthy.com. Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thanks, Tom. It was a pleasure. <clears throat> Excuse me. It was a pleasure to meet you and to yeah. have this conversation. Yeah, but we didn't meet because you're my teacher from however That's right. many years it's ago. That's so. it's, it's a was a pleasure to reconnect. You do, yeah, look, for, you yeah. do look familiar, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, really wonderful being with you, Hale. And, and also just I love your work and I'm a huge fan of it. So thank you for everything you do for, you know, the human beings on the planet that have gotten to experience the powerful releasing that you teach them to do. Well, great. Thank you so much. It's been it's been a pleasure. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Tom McCarthy. You can learn more about Tom at TomMcCarthy.com. That's T-O-M-M-C-C-A-R-T-H-Y.com. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe so you have immediate access to future episodes. Please give us a five-star rating and share it with the people you care about. If you'd like to learn more about my work, my mentor, Lester Levinson's work on the Sedona Method, please visit www.sedona.com. As you explore our site, you'll learn the key to lasting happiness, success, peace, and emotional well-being. We have books, courses, events, and plenty of free material to explore. Again, go to sedona.com. That's S-E-D-O-N-A dot com. Thank you for being here, and we'll catch you in the next episode of Letting Go 
and the greatest secret.